how when people of the world die, they're considered as a king. Some of you are rich, some of you are famous, some of you are different people that die in the world. That's not my king. My king is Lord above all. Amen. And you know, it makes me pray a lot for the people of the world because they think that they can look up to kings of the world. Amen. You know what? I'm a man. You're a man. You're a woman. She's a woman. We got children. We all the same in God's eyes. Do you believe that today? And I believe that God wants us to look up to him in respect and in honor. So in saying that today, when we get started here in a little bit, I want you to know that there's a better way for you and I to live. Amen? And the better way, I know that you know the better way, but do we really go the better way? Well, we're going to speak about Martha and Mary this morning, and we're going to talk about how a little bit confusing sometimes that things get in the Word of God. Amen? If you let it be. But if we pray and we say, God, I need you to show me the word. God, I need you to show me the way. God, I want the better way. Now, I feel like you're here today, and I feel like you're a Christian because you was tired of the old ways. I feel that you're here because you want the better way. I want the better way not only for myself, not only for my family, but for my church family. I want you to have that better road. I want you to have that better way of life. Because God did not put us on this world to suffer. God put us on this world to be happy, joyful people that live for Him and to bring other people to Him. Now, God knew that everybody on this whole planet wasn't going to be a Christian. Amen? So God says, you know what? i got to have some people. i got to have some of you people down here to work for me. You've got to be the better way. You've got to be the better attitude. You've got to be the better example because you've got to show the world that there is a better way. Now, can you remember the day when you didn't know the better way? Can you remember the day you thought your way was the better way? And can you remember the day that you finally said, there's got to be a better way? <laughs> better, 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 right? There is a better, 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 better way, amen, to lead your life. Well, maybe you understand that today, and maybe you know that, and I feel that you realize that today. But you know what? We're going to put this in perspective today and say, God, now I think things can be better. Woo, you ever thought about that? Well, I think everything's going real well. Well, you know what? I think we can always get better at what we do. Now, we're going to talk spiritually today, as we always do. We want to get spiritually better and better and better. And I, I would tell you sometimes we want to get gooder and gooder and gooder. I started to name this the gooder way, but I thought, well... Yeah, people think, well, that old pastor dumber in a box of rocks. I don't know if I'm going to listen to him and turn me off. Amen? So the better way, the better way of this spiritual life is, of course, living for God. And you know what? God's always there to answer your questions. God's always there to help you. God's always there to show you the better way. Do you have your word with you this morning? Do you have your sword with you this morning? Do you have your life with you this morning? All right, and do you have your protection? This is my sword. This is my instructions. This is my Bible. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Amen. God's good, isn't he? I don't know about you this morning, but I love my word. Now, guys, you know, in reality here this morning... I realize that we all probably know the story of Mary and Martha. I've preached it before. I think Sister Sue's probably preached it before. Maybe it's been taught in Sunday schools. Maybe it's been taught in Bible studies. But I feel as though sometimes we need to get 
busier for Jesus. I feel like we need to get more busy for the Lord, but I think in our life today, I think in the speediness of the world, I think in the in the the, the life that we live in, my friends, I think sometimes we lose track. Martha had that little problem. Huh? She would lose track. I don't like to lose track. Do you? I don't like anything to do with going backwards. I don't like anything to do with being stuck. I don't like anything to do with just sitting in the neutral zone. I want to be a man of God that moves forward the rest of my life. I want you to be a saint of God today that will move forward. I don't want you to get confused no more. I don't want you to get bottled up in the things of the world. Now, there's people that's not in church today. Let me say it like it is, because they're bottled up in the world. They've got so many other things they think that is more important than serving God, that's why they're not in the house of the Lord today. And let me tell you something. It's not just this church. It's all churches. You think this church is small? I know where there's some a lot smaller than this one. Amen? And I'm talking plenty of them. You know why? Because they're a Martha. They lose track of the good things that God has done for them. They lose track of who Jesus is. And they lose track of what they're here for. What are you here for? I don't mean in church day. What are you here on this old planet Earth for? You're here to be that example. You are here to bring the Word of God. You are here to get out and save souls. We had a powerful prayer here this morning in, in this little church. Amen. And I tell you what, if it's not about you and if it's not about me, no, it's got to be about God. It's got to all be about God. We need to start sharing our compassion. We need to start sharing our love. We need to start sharing our thoughts and consideration for others. Because, see, there's so many others that are hurting. There's so many others that are in pain today. Well, chain of fear coming up soon. I believe that each and every one of us has at least one. Listen to me. I believe we have at least one bad link on our chain. I don't know if it's one of them words that I put in the bulletin today. But I'm sure if you pray about it, I'm sure if you think about it, I'm sure you're going to come up with a word to put on a link. But I want you to know this morning that God says he can remove all bad links from your chain. God says I can remove all bad things from your life. Maybe thoughts should be added to that. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. A chain of thought, yep, which leads to a chain of fear. Well, you're right this morning, friends. We are human, and we are going to have thoughts, and we are going to have temptations, and we are going to have manipulations in our life that's going to try to steer you the wrong direction you know let me figure this up sunday morning an hour for prayer an hour for sunday school an hour for service especially if pastor sees preaching right here within the hour let's see one hour at night one hour on tuesday night what is that about is it six hours six to seven six to seven hours a week a week. Maybe more than that, a day to set a job. <laughs> seven full days, less than seven hours, we spend in the house of the Lord. That's right. 
Where's the people at? They can't spare seven hours of their time a week to come to the house of God. Something is wrong with the big picture. Right on. Right on. Oh, I've been told before, well, why don't we come up with like a Thursday night Bible study? Really? We have a hard time getting you here on a Tuesday night, amen? Why don't we have two services on Sunday morning? Okay, what are we going to do with the first service? There probably wouldn't be anybody here. But here's my point. They don't know the better way. I believe that you, I believe that you people in the church this morning are the faithful. I believe that you're the dedicated. I believe you're the people. I believe you're the men, women, boy, and girl this morning that wants to stay on the better way. Now, this might be a little bit different service to you this morning, but I'm okay with it if you are. God says that he would lead his people. God says he would guide his people. God said he would direct his people. Where? The right way, which means to me the better way. But we got to listen to God. We got to have obedience to God. We got to have reverence to God. We got to praise God. Amen. We got to praise God. We really need to praise God. We need to praise God just a little bit more. Praise God. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to install a cold sprinkler system in the church. And I'm going to have one over every pew. And from now on, when you come in church, if you see somebody on that pew not doing too good, you might ought to move. Because I might ought to turn the sprinklers on. I'll bet I'll get some hooping and some hollering in. It might not be spiritual, but maybe it'll be a breakthrough. Maybe it'll get them started. Maybe it'll wake them up and say, praise God. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Amen. The strength of the Lord is supposed to be your joy. Amen. What is joy? It's happiness. It's peace. It's living for God. And it's not about having the things that I listed in the bulletin today. Because if you have any of them words hanging on your chain link today, guys, it's hard to find the better way. The better way to me, we're going to talk about it here just a little bit in Luke. You know, Martha and Mary, they love Jesus. But there's people in the world that love Jesus. They say they do. Come on. They say they love God. How much do they love God? Can they spare six to seven hours a week to come to God's house? Apparently not. Apparently not. Some people use God. Yeah, he's just like that old spare tire. Thank God for that spare tire in the trunk. Most of you probably don't even know if you have a spare tire in your trunk. And if most of you do got a spare tire in your trunk, you probably haven't checked the air pressure in years. So I remind you, tomorrow, go get the air checked. Because when you have a flat, and when you get out, and you grab that spare, and you're all happy, and you get that on your, and you let that jack down, that car goes all the way to the ground because the spare is flat, I should have listened to that old big mouth preacher that didn't check my air pressure. Amen. Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you so much for this day. I thank you for the honor and the privilege to be behind your pulpit to bring your word that you told me to bring today. I ask that the ears would be able to receive it today. I ask that you would anoint my lips, touch everyone everywhere, help us to be all we can be. Lord, show us that better way today. 
in Jesus' name, if we could all say amen. Well, you know, let's not be quick to judge people here today. But you know, Mary and Martha, they loved the Lord. But you know, it just seemed like Martha, we keep losing track. So let's not judge her because let me tell you something this morning, my friends. We get off track a little bit too. But you know what? It's time to uh, get on the rail. It's time to get on. It's time to ride correctly. Even while carrying out the Lord's work, we can still lose sight. We can still lose our priority, can we not? If we are not prayed up. If we don't find and if we don't deepen our intimacy in our spiritual life, in our prayer life, in our relationship with God, we are going to continue to fall off the tracks. I feel like a lot of times we're on track, but I feel like sometimes we fall off the track. Well, let me just go ahead and be plain and simple here with you this morning, okay? This might hurt your feelings, but I'm okay with that because I want you to listen carefully. When we're on track with God, when we're in line with God's way, when we're doing what God tells us to do, we get to find that place someday called heaven. But now let me tell you something. God is going to come back. He's such a nice God. But he's going to be sneaky one day. But he warned us. He actually said he was going to come like a thief in the night. That's right. Well, a thief in the night. They, they, they quite sneaky. I heard one of the kids say this morning, Cece said the devil's sneaky. Yeah, that's right. He sneaks up on us. I said, you're right there, baby. Yeah. And he does. But we know he's there. Right. So how sneaky is he? If you know he's there, you're right. He is, he is creeping in on us. You know he's there. Stop him. You know he's there. If he sneaks in and he gets a hold of you, that's your fault. Oh, we're on track with God. We're in the better way. We're in the straight and we're in the narrow path. Man, if God comes today, we got it going on. But here's what I got to tell you this morning. If you're off that track when God comes, I hate to tell you, my friends, you ain't going to make heaven your home. (gasps) Boy, I'll get ridiculed for that. Yes, I will, but I'm okay with that. I can handle that. Because you got to say what's in God's Word. When God says you stand for Him, and when God says you live for Him, He says, my son... My daughter, you will come to me. And he will caress you with them big, wide-open arms. And Sister Debbie, he's going to grab you up like a little teddy bear. And he's going to hug you. And it's going to be such a hug, you're going to think he's going to break you in half. But it's going to be love. It's going to be compassion. It's going to be the best hug you ever had in your life. It's not going to be one of these blow-off hugs like you get from some of your brothers and sisters in church. Come on! Come on! It's going to be one of them compassionate hugs like, My child, you're here. That intimate feeling, that compassionate feeling, that hug of the biggest love in the world. But God says you've got to stay on the better way. God says you've got to stay on track here. Well, you know what the world says. There is a heaven and there is a hell. Most of them say that. But they said, you know what? All you got to be is a good person. You'll make heaven your home. That's not the way that it goes, my friends. If I'm hurting any of your feelings, that's okay. Just get over it. It'll be all right. Don't walk out now. Because here's what I got to say this morning. God says if we stay on the better track, he's going to take us to that place called heaven. See, the old judgment line's coming. Are you ready? How ready are you? the better way.
Take your Bibles, go to Luke 10. Let's go to number 38. If you don't have your Bible or you can't read your little words this morning, here it is in big old letters up here this morning. Amen? As, here we go. Now it came to pass as they went that he entered into a certain village, and a certain woman named Martha received him unto her house. What's this talking about? Jesus and his disciples, they walked a lot. Remember that? They didn't have cars back then. Did you know that? No, nope, they didn't have no way to get around. They had their feet in their sandals. Amen? Probably sometimes they didn't even have sandals, but they walked around. As Jesus and his disciples continued on their way to Jerusalem, they came to a village. They came to a town. They came to a little place. This is where they met this woman named Martha and Mary, these two women. Amen? Martha welcomed them into their home. I've said every once in a while, if Jesus showed up today and knocked on your door, would you let him in? Or would some of you run and hide? Or, yeah, what would you go hide? Uh -huh. Don't look back, guys. Don't look back because, see, when Jesus comes and when Jesus knocks on that door, I hope you can open that up. Full blast. I hope you and you open that door up and you got a smile and you think that's Publisher Clearinghouse out there with your million dollars for you. Amen? I want you to have a bigger smile than that because I want you to say, oh, you better than any money can buy today. Amen? But are you ready when he comes back to knock on your door? God's coming soon. You can almost, you can almost hear it. It's close. It's close, my friends. God's coming, period. The next scripture says this. And she had a sister called Mary, which also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. Hmm, what do you think? Sister Crystal, come up here to the altar. <laughs> Finally. Kneel down at the altar right there. Kneel down at the altar right there. Sister April, come here. Now you see all this all this stuff's kind of out of place, but you kind of, you know, make stuff look good. And, you know, Jesus is here. And Do you love Jesus? I'd rather be over there. But do you love him? You'd rather, okay, go over there then. <laughs> you good. I like that. Now, what, what's your girl's name today? Is it Mary? <laughs> they can, can't they? Uh-huh. Come here, Sister Erica. Now, things is kind of a mess over. See, I, I got OCD, but, you know, them's all, them's all kind of crooked, and them flowers is, well, they look like they're dying. You just need to be cleaning up a little bit for me. Yeah, clean that mess up, Martha. God's good, isn't he? And she had a sister called Mary, which also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his words. Now, Mary is sitting here at Jesus' feet, hearing everything that he has to say. Amen? What's the next scripture say? Number 40 says, But Martha was cumbered about much serving and came to him and said, Lord, come here, Sister Erica. Jesus is over here, remember? Now, what did, you, what did Martha say to Jesus? She said, Lord, doest thou not care that my sister? Hey, that's good. <laughs> hey, we got another saved one today. Amen? If you can tell, we didn't practice this, okay? <laughs> hath left me to serve alone. Bid her, therefore, that she help me. Now, I want you to realize something in this picture here this morning, girls and guys. <laughs> Praise the Lord. God's good, isn't he? I tried to get some Marthas up here, and they're all turned out to be Marys. They're tricking me this morning. Uh-oh. Here comes a Martha. Here comes a Martha. Or is this a Mary? Well... Now, clean that mess up over here. Martha, I thought was doing a better job than that, but I think she got convicted while she was here. Amen? Well, God is good, but Martha was cumbered about much serving. You know what Martha was concerned about? She wanted to make things look good for Jesus. Yeah, she wanted to. I mean, things had to be just right. Things had to be straightened up. But then she got to looking over there, and she was going, that's not right. 
Now here I am trying to clean this house up for Jesus. Here I am trying to make things look good. Here I am doing the best that I can. And look at my sister. She's down there at Jesus' feet. Who's in the right here? Mary. Wasn't Martha just a little bit concerned about what was going on? But see, she wasn't on the right track. She was off track a little bit. Amen? Good job, Martha. You're going to be convicted someday. Amen. Good job. Her sister Mary sat at Lord's feet listening to what he had taught. Remember that miracle about Lazarus? Every time I hear the word Lazarus, I'm going to thank the little brother William. Amen? Because basically, he was brought from the death to bed. Lazarus had to stink. He'd been there three or four days. You wouldn't have bad off, was your brother? Amen? But thank God for what he does. But see, if we had more Marys, and less Marthas. Do you realize what the world would be like today? Do you realize the prayers that would be answered? Do you realize the miracles that would be done? Oh, have you ever heard somebody say, Well, I never see a miracle no more. Well, I tell you what, send them over here and let us tell them all about a miracle. We see miracles all the time because God's on the throne. Amen. It's the prayer of a righteous man. The prayer of a righteous child that will bring people from their deathbed. Now, God's tired of messing around. God's getting kind of tired of Martha's. Glad there's no Martha's in here today. God's ready for the Marys. God says, you know what? It's time to get yourself corrected. It's time to get yourself in order. It's time to become a Mary. It's time to get rid of Martha. It's time for Martha... Ooh, to be convicted. Good job. That wasn't even planned. You girls had that figured out. See, God convicted you. God convicts us of our things. Oh, don't pray for conviction. I love conviction. I love conviction. How do you think some people get saved? Conviction. Thank you, girls. You did a wonderful job. Give them all a hand. Amen. All I can say is you never know what's going to pop up around here, do you? I did say it was going to be a little different, so here we go with a little bit different. You know, Martha said, Lord, doesn't it seem unfair to you that Mary just sits there while I work? Now, guys, if you're not in the right perspective with God, you would have thought the same thing. You would have thought... Well, why is she just sitting there and I'm trying to make this place look better for Jesus? She chose to lose a blessing. Now, let's use this spiritually again this morning. Martha should have been cleaning her life up. Not her little house. Am I right? She should have had her life cleaned up. If her life would have been cleaned up like Mary... She would have been there with Mary the whole time. But here again, it's a story of the Bible that Jesus has told us about. The next verse says this. And Jesus answered to her and said, Did you know he said, Did you notice he said it twice? Yeah. That's right. Here's what he said. Martha, Martha. Thou art careful and troubled about many things. You know, that's true. Because Martha, Sister Martha, Sister Martha, Martha, you've been with all of That's true. Sister Martha in Michigan, I'm thinking about you right now. Less Sister Sister Marty and, 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 and oh, well, Marty, that's close. Her name is Martha, though, and Brother Grant this morning. Amen. But you know, Jesus answered and said to her, Martha, Martha. He didn't say it once, he said it twice. Thou art careful and troubled about many things. And the next one says, But one thing is needful, and Mary hath chosen that good part which shall not be taken away from her. 
You didn't hear that. Shall not be taken away from her. That's what Jesus said. Jesus said, Mary, you got me in you. You got God in you. It will not be taken away from you. You can give it away if you want to. But I don't see any of you wanting to give away what you have so far. You have came too far now to look back. Listen to me, saints of God. You have came this far. Please do not turn around. Please do not even look around. (laughs) Please don't even look back. Come on. Don't be a pillar of salt. Can't you just see? Can't you just see him right now? Come on, woman. Can't you see that? Come on, woman. Boy, she's steadily looking back. Steadily looking back, huh? Uh Uh-huh. Yeah, be steadily looking back. God said, okay. I've had enough. What did God do? Took care of her. Throw her out in the horse pasture and let the cows lick her, right? Turn her into a pillar of salt. Is that right? (laughs) Well, God knows what he's doing is all I can tell you this morning, guys. Verse number 42. There is only one thing worth being concerned about. It's about God. If you're concerned about the Lord, if you're concerned about your salvation, if you're concerned about serving Jesus, guess what, my friends? Everything else will fall right into the place that it needs to be. There's only one thing that we should be concerned about that. Now, see, Mary had discovered it, but Martha hadn't. Come on. It's like the world and the people of the world. you got people in churches today that still hasn't discovered who God is. Boy, I told you I'm going to get ridiculed for this CD. It is what it is. I thought I'd never say that. It's in black and white. It's simple. It's cut and dry. It's cut and dry, right? But you know, guys, here's the way i got to look at it today. And we got to be this way from now on. Do you claim to be a Christian? Amen. Do you claim to be a servant of God? Amen. Really? You got to be bold. You got to be strong. You got to tell it like it is. Uh, let's talk about a few other things, for instance, offhand. This bathroom thing, we got to stand against that. This homosexuality, we got to stand against this. We got to stand against this shacking. We got to stand against the things that are going on in the church. We got to stand against the wiles of the enemy. And if we don't stand against the wiles of the enemy, guess what? You're doomed. Well, I've lived this life. I've been living a Christian for 15 years now, and I know that heaven is my home. Are you real sure today? See, I think sometimes our little old pea brain gets confused. Yes, ma'am. Um, I got invited by some friends this past week to go out and eat. Okay. Well, we'll eat dinner. All right. So we get there, and we ordered. Me or all drinking ice water. The food comes. We're sitting there. We're starting to eat. Well, a couple of them told the waitress they wanted one of them wanted a margarita, and Uh-oh. the other one wanted. Two of the others wanted beer and everything, and I, and they looked at me like, well, what are you going to drink? I'm like, well, I got water. And they kept on and on, and finally I just stood up and I said, look, I got to go. Okay. Wonderful. And, and I left my food there, and I was like, I, I got to go. You know what? That's a phrase report. Give her a hand. Now, that took a lot. That takes a lot of God. That takes a lot of boldness. That takes a lot of self-control. Self-control. You better have self-control control uh-huh you better have self-control of yourself exactly right that's wonderful that is wonderful let me leave you with this this morning that's good that's good stuff the Lord affirmed Mary's choice to be with him and he kind of worked on Martha of course like he works on us amen to follow her sister's 
example. You know, we hear example a lot. We're supposed to be that example. Jesus was using these sisters to each other. Jesus says, well, I got one that's serving me with a true heart. But I got one. Oh, she knows me. She loves me. But she's too busy with other things. She's too wrapped up. She's too tied up. Jesus said, you got to be the example. See, Jesus said it back then. He says it today. He'll say it forever. you got to be that example. Are you that example that you need to be? Both them women love Jesus, but let me go ahead and tell you like this. Whoopee. Right? I say it all the time. Hey, 91% of the world believes in God. Whoopee. Does that mean 91% of the world is going to heaven? No, it does not. Now, I don't mean that sarcastically. I mean it like this. That's wonderful that 91% believe in God. Doesn't mean 91% can go to heaven. In saying that, I want to say this this morning. At least they got a head start. At least they believe in God. So let's pray that God pricks their heart. Let's pray that God pulls them in. Let's pray that that example is sent to them to pull them into church. It takes more than just saying, I know God. It actually takes more than just saying, I love God. You know, you can just say that, right? Sometimes you probably tell your spouse that and don't even mean it. But that's besides the point, right? Let's don't talk about kids. Get off of that one, amen? <laughs> Nothing should supersede the believer's relationship with Christ. Nothing. Amen? Both character and conduct should reflect his likeness. Talks a little bit about that in Ephesians 4. So I want to close with this this morning. Are you a Martha or are you a Mary? Now I want you to remember who the good one was. Who was the good one? Hey, boy, you guys have been paying attention. You actually stayed awake. Must not even be 12 o'clock yet. And you don't smell your beans burning, so let's go. You want to get in on this? I figured you would. That's okay. I love it. Get up here and say it. Okay. Now, I want everybody to think about what's fixing to be said here, okay? And Jesus answered and said to her, Martha, Martha. Is he saying, Sandy, Sandy? <laughs> or Steve, Steve? Or Debbie, Debbie? Or Crystal, Crystal? Or Sue, Sue? <laughs> Make it personal for yourself. Like a lot of times, we're more, truthfully, we're more of a Martha, Martha than a Mary. And this is what God is trying to tell us. You know, this morning when we had our little prayer service, God truly does want to do something. But it's going to take us to step out. God's there. So is he saying, Crystal, Crystal? Is he, is he saying, Grandma, Grandma, listen to me. Sister Bye, Sister Bye. Think about it, guys. Sister Connie, Sister Connie. Brother Bobby, Brother Bobby. What's your name? I forgot. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing here is, he's calling us. He's calling all of us. Yeah, as Pastor said, we can come and sit on these church pews every Sunday, from Sunday to Sunday. That's right. But is God truly calling your name? Are you doing are you more, as he said? Are you more of a Martha than a Mary? Okay, my turn. Your turn. Okay. Prayer service was cool, you know, this morning. So I hope everybody starts coming. It's it, it's good. Yeah. Afterwards, this, you know, I stood up and, you know, God used me. And then God used Sister Sue. And then God used Sister Vi. And Vi didn't know why. <laughs> he told me to come tell you to read this. And I'm like, okay. I read it. And I'm like, all right, Lord, you tell me, you tell me what to do with it. God says, okay, it's time to feed the church. So y'all fix and get fed some more good stuff. All righty, Ephesians 4, starting in verse 14. Then we, no longer, then we no longer be infants tossed back and forth by the waves Amen. and blown here and there by every wind of teaching Amen. and by the cunning and craftiness of people and their deceitful schemes. All right, y'all, in Sister Sue's prayer, 
it says, okay, it's time for us to step up to the plate. Lord, we want strength. We want to be overcomers. Well, guess what, y'all? If we stop being Martha's and we begin to be Mary's, this is what's going to happen. Amen. Are y'all ready? Amen. Verse 15, instead, and in other words, we, we, just went, we, we, we just had a transformation. Our name is no longer Martha. Our name is Mary. Amen. That word right there, instead, just confirmed. Speaking the truth in love, we will grow to become every respect. Oh, yeah. yeah, we will become in every respect the mature body of him who is the head that is Christ. From him, the whole body joined and held together by every supporting ligament grows and builds itself up in love as each part does its work. Y'all, we are the body. We are the church. And as long as each one of us does our merry part, guess what? Them ligaments will be joined Praise together God. as one. We call it unity in Christ. And we've talked about unity quite a bit today. Amen? God's good. God is good. I want to ask you a question this morning. If there's any Marys in this church, raise your hand. Everybody's hands better go up. <laughs> Not just okay. So we're all in accord, right? We all want to be a Mary. Amen? We're going to have a prayer. But you got to really mean it. you got to really want to be a Mary. We're also about to have communion today. I don't know if anybody realizes this besides myself today, but it's a very, very serious thing. It's very sacred. It's very serious. It's very... It's an unconditional love. It's a sacrifice. It's a, it's a, I could just go on and on and on. We've changed communion up just a little bit. We're going to have a different type of communion today. It's still communion, but we're just going to change the order of it a little bit. Hope everybody's okay with that. It's time for a change. Do a little change here and there. It's time to speak out for God. It's time to be bold for God. It's time to be the Mary. It's time to, you know, sweep Martha over the right direction. It's time to put Martha in the better way. The better way. That's all I want for you today. The better way. God gave me this message. And I heard him just as sure enough as I'm looking at you today. You've got to be on the better way. I want you to be on the better way. I love you today. I want you to have the best. He don't mean the best car. He doesn't mean the best house. He doesn't mean the best necklace, does he? He doesn't mean the best of clothes. What does he mean? The best spiritual life that you can have. Spiritual. Personal relationship. You know, I, it's, it's like I have to remind people all the time. We're here to speak of God and the Bible and religion and Christianity spiritually. We don't even claim to be of the world anymore. We have to be in the world, but we don't have to partake of the world. I believe Paul told us that. We might have to live in it. A few weeks ago, yeah, a few weeks ago, I, I preached about how money talks to most people. Amen? Yeah, big money. Big money. The biggest thing it says to all of us is goodbye. Because it goes about as fast as it comes. But I want you to... But I want you to remember this. Spiritually speaking, God says, you're mine. And you're on the better way. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Now, Heavenly Father.